at the Irvine Agriculture Research Extension here. starting to turn. Here we are. Whoa, look this at that. shabby looking tree. This one right here is the one we're after. That one like it. Give me filming with you. So here they go. Too much. Yeah. Oh. These are so soft. Is it, you is it get good to them. eat? Well, this, let me see. Mushy. Native American persimmon. Oh, it's really, it is raising you. But it's see like that, boozy. That rum, yeah, that's why yeah. I, I want to, I'm telling you. You know, yeast Don't try occurs naturally on fruit. You want to try? Fruit. We'll get some, it's because it's really astringent. These are cool. You don't like it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but look at these. I'm going to pick a bunch and then we'll... Do a quick little analysis on these things. Oh, they do are that really astringent, and there's like a bitter, kind of a bitter aftertaste a little bit. It'll stick with you. The fact it goes away in like 15 minutes. It's very, uh, very interesting. Because they're really delicious, and we'll let them ripen, and we'll eat some of them. Could make some crazy bread. This one's got completely different leaves right here. All right, we got them. Bringing them into the lab. At the lab. Boy, did these guys get rotten and smushed fast. Right, so here is from ripest, basically a smushed raisin, through all the different ripening stages of the native persimmon. This is the native North American persimmon, and all of its different ripening stages. I include even one other ripening stage. This is called rotten, basically. Smushed. And almost brown, black, rotten, and through all the others. This is the skin's kind of breaking, it's very smushy, but not as smashed as that one. Soft, firm, but looks like the colors change, and then the three different uh, unripe varieties. Alright, so you can see the cutting strategy here. We're just kind of chopping it up on the fruit itself, uh, and then we're going to put that into the Eppendorf tube. We'll do that for all of these. The smushy ones will probably just have to like just peel a little bit back. And then we'll weigh it all and extract them all the same way. Alright, pretty good. I don't know. We're gonna try to add methanol to all these. I'm gonna go, since there's enough water in the fruit itself, I'm not gonna add any water. So to kind of mix it up here, I'm gonna just use pipettes and just kind of like push it down in to the methanol. So there's a little bit lower. Alright. Next day, out of the negative 80. Oh my, that's cold. There it is. Negative 80 overnight. This didn't have much time to do it yesterday, so this is the best uh, solution. Doesn't look like the methanol froze. A little vortex the sonicate them. Uh, let me go ahead and dilute them out. All right, vortexing the samples. They're defrosted. Looking pretty good. I mean, I'm probably gonna get more efficient extraction on the gooey ones, so. But the goal is not to be crazy quantitative or anything. Um, maybe to see if there's a new molecule that appears or disappears or goes away. All 
Alright, got them off the sonicator here. So, onto the centrifuge. Gonna. Alright, off the centrifuge in order. P1. That's the least ripe. P2. P3. Does seem to have the right ripeness colors. P4. P5. Here is P6. Starting to get a lot of orange in the extract color. And then finally P7. Tons of orange. Basically rotten. Okay, so we're just getting fresh tubes. We're going to try to pull, I think, 300 microliters. Very similar to the oil extraction method. Because uh, it's still a methanol dilution into water. So we're going to try to pull 300 microliters uh, from each tube. Just getting the soluble methanol portion on top. So we'll do 300, 300, blue tip. Alright, as you can see. Pretty good. You can take all of it. Centrifuge for the second time. All right, so we got them all transferred. I mean, the first five or so look basically the same. All right, there they are. Order P. P1 through 7. Zevo Qtoff. And then we're going to be running this uh, American Persimmon, ripeness level 1 to 7, uh, on that C18 method with fast EDA and positive, looking for O linked. Uh, flavones. Oh, all the American persimmons in order, and here is the data. Um, we can see early we have the development of a peak, and then it goes back down again. We have the complete loss of this peak at 329 eventually. Uh, we also have what looks like the loss maybe of a peak here. Um, the only one that's very different from everybody is the rotten one. But everything else kind of looks, you know, looks like we got this peak that's kind of going up, this peak that's kind of going up. Let's try to identify a few of these things. Alright, so we're going to start with a really late mass here. You can see this mass at 552 is a big blob in the P7, the incredibly ripe fruit. Uh, and then it kind of decreases steadily down to where we're almost seeing none of it in the unripe fruit. This is the orange color that we're seeing, and it's actually a cluster of peaks here out in the 500 mass range. And 552, 553, I believe, is a uh, carotenoid. So probably either cryptoxanthin or another derivative of cryptoxanthin. Uh, which is uh, probably the color, the carotenoids are probably responsible for the orange color uh, in the persimmon. Then conversely, this mass at 429 in the same area is uh, decreasing in intensity. Here we go, persimmon rich in carotenoids, especially beta carotene and beta cryptoxanthin. These are responsible for the color. Very interesting, that peak at 429 is the hydroxy of vitamin D5. So top hit at, is chlorosolic acid, 21 matched fragments. Uh, that is at 473 retention time at 3.4 minutes. And there's a pretty good amount of this stuff in there. Foods that are rich in chlorosolic acid are guava, loquat, and olives. Hmm but I've seen it in persimmon variant.
Oh, Chlorosalic acid improves glucose metabolism and diabetes and pre-diabetes in healthy subject or uh, hypoglycemia. So this seems like it's like a really healthy, hey, you gotta start eating more persimmon. The really interesting thing we're seeing is this Mirstatrin. Mirstatrin at 465 was another thing going up and down. And this is a plant metabolite. Again, it's an O-linked flavone. Looks like they're finding it in persimmons. It's in a bunch of different fruits. And it's a flavonoid found in fruits, nuts, berries, and tea. And myrstatrin was found as a major antioxidant and flavonoid responsible for the strong antioxidant characteristics of persimmons. So this is one of the major antioxidants in persimmons. Uh, pretty cool. One last neat discovery is this citrulline. I'm trusting that ID. Lots of matched secondary fragments, so lots of citrulline. Citrulline's a pretty cool molecule. Uh, it is another naturally occurring molecule. Uh, it is known to boost testosterone levels. What? Maybe it's time to, maybe like an aphrodisiac, I don't know. Maybe it's time to uh, eat some persimmons. Look, some of these are bad hits, some of these are good hits, but these are all the things I'm finding. I may have to dig into this deeper. Persimmon data. There we go.